I don't remember exactly how old I was at the time, maybe 14 or 15. I had this really crazy guy that lived on my street. Everyone called him Crazy Mike, and he really was as crazy as you could imagine, but more on him in a minute. I had this one friend that was a little wild, we'll call him Charlie. He was kind of the adventurous friend that got me to do some crazy stuff. We went through a phase for about two or three months where we hung out a lot and it was honestly a lot of fun. One of the things we would do is explore the nearby woods. There was a lot of wildlife and anyone could go out there and explore as far as they wanted. We lived on a mountain and we would hike up the mountain and when we had enough for the day we would hike back down. We normally took the regular roads back down because it was just a little bit easier to get home that way. My friend lived a few roads up from me so I would walk up to his house with him and then go home by myself. I remember this one particular day we had gone hiking through the creek. Bear in mind it was freezing outside at the time. There was snow on the ground and a lot of water was frozen. At one point we had the bright idea of walking on the ice. As you might imagine we fell into the water. It wasn't very deep or anything, not even enough to get above our chest, but we were dripping with water and it was about 5 degrees outside and there was snow on the ground, but being the crazy kids we were, it didn't stop us. We just continued hiking even after we got soaking wet. I don't know if we just had a really high tolerance to the cold or it was adrenaline and we were all good. We continued on for a couple of hours that day. But after a certain point, I finally talked him into heading home for the day. He agreed and we went down and got on the road. We made our way back down like usual. But this is the point when I started freezing. I was too cold and I knew my body. I knew that I was in some kind of danger. Like getting near hypothermia or something. When we got to my friend's house, he was more than willing to let me come in and warm up for a few minutes. But just as we were getting to his house, my mom called him. She was really angry with me because I hadn't answered my phone in an hour. I tried explaining the situation to her, but she just screamed at me over and over again to come home. So I had to walk the rest of the way home, and that was that. This is where Crazy Mike comes in, because he lives one road above me, and it saves me about 10 minutes of walking if I cut through a part of his property to get to my house. He had a big fence, but so did his neighbor. There was a small walkway kind of area between the two spots, I was obviously in a rush to get back home and warm up. In fact, I was jogging most of the way. I hadn't heard anything about Crazy Mike by this point, so I figured it would be okay if I cut through his property this one time. I started going through and that's when he came out of his house with a rifle. He pointed at me and started screaming at me like a maniac. Of course, I turned around and sprinted away. I ran all the way back home and told my mother. She thought I was exaggerating and that I shouldn't have been cutting through people's property anyway, and that was when I started asking people around the area about him. I heard some stories about Crazy Mike and some of the things he would do. I heard that he was a conspiracy theorist, a drug dealer, criminal, felon, and a bunch of other nutty stuff. If I had to sum it all up in a single phrase, he was a bad guy. Whoever I asked never had anything good to say about him, and the part that freaked me out was that I still had to pass Crazy Mike's house on my way home. I didn't have to cut through his property, but I did still have to walk in front of his house on the road to get to my house, and that made me terribly uncomfortable. Because now I was constantly worried that I was going to get shot or something. I still would go hiking with Charlie and all that, and after a couple of times of going home, there was no incident, so I thought that that was going to be the end of it. However, I noticed something else. He had video cameras on the outside of his property looking out onto the road. I'd never noticed them before, but now that I was aware of his insanity, I paid a little bit more attention. Whenever I walked by, the cameras would follow me. What freaked me out the most was that they were manually operated cameras. They weren't the kind of cameras that just followed motion around. He was sitting there operating those cameras every single time I ever walked by, watching me. I'm not sure if he was recording all the footage or not, but he made me uncomfortable either way. I remember there was this one time when I was walking home from Charlie's house at night. It must have been about 10 or 11. It was really late, and even then, the cameras followed me as I walked by. I thought that was going to be it, that nothing else was going to happen between me and Crazy Mike. 
well, I was dead wrong. It was still during the same winter season, and I was walking home during a blizzard. And that was just the kind of guy I was. My mom was going to order pizza that night, and I didn't want to miss it. I passed by Crazy Mike's like I always did, and that was when something unexpected happened. He had this giant fence, and it had to have been 15 feet tall, and it was this really thick wood. Part of it opened up, and a dog ran out after me. I couldn't tell what kind of dog it was, but it was angry and barking at me really loud, and ran after me, and I could tell that it was going to bite me as hard as it could. I got a seriously violent vibe. I was lucky that I was in really good shape and managed to sprint away, having a head start. Didn't slip or anything else either. That situation could have turned out really bad, really fast. But either way, my family ended up moving a few weeks later for unrelated reasons. My mom actually got a new job in a different state, and that was the end of my experience with Crazy Mike. Even now I wonder what his problem was. Was he some kind of drug dealer or criminal? Why was he so paranoid about some kid walking in front of his house or cutting through a piece of his property? I've asked my friend on Facebook a couple of times if he's heard anything about Crazy Mike and apparently nothing has changed. So make of that what you will. I guess the moral of the story is that you should avoid crazy people as much as you can. Sometimes just walking in front of their house is enough to set them off. I consider myself a very romantic girl. I've always loved the idea of romance and I've always wanted a really happy relationship. And that was probably why I had a serious relationship that started when I was a freshman in high school. The guy I met was kind of nerdy, but he was super sweet to me. I remember he brought me flowers in school one time and that completely won me over. We dated for a couple of years, all throughout high school actually and even into college. We ended up going to the same community college as well. I really thought that we were going to end up getting married. I even secretly started planning our wedding. Of course, I didn't say anything about that to him because I didn't want to freak him out, but it was on my mind. But one day, something about him changed. I couldn't exactly tell you what, but he became a little bit too possessive. I always knew he was a jealous person and I did my best to be sensitive to that, but it's not overwhelming after a certain point. I had a chemistry class and I got paired with a guy to work on a project. We had to do some work outside of the class and you already know how my boyfriend reacts. I told him I couldn't hang out one day because I had to be at the library to get some work done. He seemed a little suspicious about it. I almost always made time for him. He wasn't used to getting told no. Me and my chemistry partner were almost done with our project. We made a lot of good progress and I was sure that we were going to make a good grade but that was when my boyfriend showed up at the library and oh my god, he made such a scene. It was the worst thing ever. He started freaking out. He tried fighting my chemistry partner. He just kept yelling at me that he was trying to spend time with me and I lied to him to spend time with another guy. He was literally hysterical. He thought I was cheating on him but nothing I said stopped him. He just kept going and everyone in the library was staring at us. The librarian didn't even intervene, they just let the whole thing continue. Finally I told my boyfriend that we were over. I said it really loud and very firm, and that was the only thing that got him to stop. He made the most broken facial expression I'd ever seen and he stormed out. After that whole experience I decided that I really didn't want to be with him. He was just too jealous. I talked with him later on the phone that night and I explained that I was planning on breaking up with him anyway but that whole fiasco in the library was a serious tipping point for me. He still thought I was cheating on him with the guy in the library and I was honestly done fighting about it. He said that he was willing to try and work it out no matter what. He said that he didn't want to lose me. He really wasn't taking it well. It finally got to the point where he was begging me to stay with him and I just couldn't tell him no anymore. I finally told him goodbye and just hung up. Looking back, I don't know how else I could have responded to that whole situation. He was really difficult and this is the point when he started stalking me. And it was small stuff at first, like I would notice him at the same stores. He just always happened to be there. Of course, he was just looking at me. 
He would see me look at him and then he would look away or pretend like he was looking at his phone, but I knew that he was watching me. I remember it got really bad during the winter actually. He would come to my house and write me messages on my car in the snow. He would say things like he's sorry and that he would change and that he forgives me. Every single thing in the world, he tried to say it. He was willing to do anything to get me back, but I didn't want to be with him. And the more he tried, the more it creeped me out. I remember um, doing this really weird thing outside of my one philosophy class. There were glass windows and I had a seat next to the windows and he would sit on the bench outside and stare at me every single class. It was horrible. There was no escaping him. And one day things finally went too far. Now, my family had always gotten a cabin for Christmas. My parents and two sisters would stay in this cabin in the woods and spend time together. My family wasn't very big on spending a bunch of money on gifts that people didn't really want. Call us communists, but the family time was much more special and I really enjoyed that tradition. My ex-boyfriend knew about this cabin. In fact, we brought him with us one time, so he knew where it was. I remember it very vividly. It was snowing, we had a fire going, we were drinking eggnog and enjoying Christmas cookies. We were having a really good time. I went outside for a smoke break and I was just sitting on the rocking chair outside. This was when I saw something in the woods. I got really nervous that it was a bear. That was always our big fear when we stayed in that cabin. There was always the possibility of a bear. But I squinted my eyes a little bit and noticed that it was no animal. It was my ex-boyfriend. When I first noticed, I screamed. I ran back inside and told my family. They already knew that my ex was a total creep, so we all got prepared. My dad went outside and chased him away. My dad said that he chased my ex-boyfriend for about a quarter mile through the woods. He figured that was far enough and that he wasn't going to come back, especially since we were going to have the cops notified about the situation. We did our best not to let him ruin our Christmas cabin time, but we all felt a little uneasy after that, even though we knew that he was probably harmless. It just felt a little uncomfortable after that, at least for me. My family was very supportive about the situation, though. It's been a little while since the whole situation, and I still see him from time to time, and it's really bad. He doesn't really reach out to me anymore, but I know he still watches me a lot. Getting a restraining order almost feels like being too precocious. I don't want to be mean about it, but at the same time, I really want to move on from him. Some of my friends have been talking me into getting a restraining order on him, though, and I might. Looking back, I shouldn't have been such a romantic. There were a lot of warning signs that I missed. He was a seriously messed up individual, and I ignored every single warning sign there was, and there were plenty. If you're like me... Make sure to understand who it is that you're with. I almost married that guy, all because I built up some fantasy relationship in my head. The way I wanted things to be, but not the way things really are. Make sure you see things for how they really are and hopefully everything will work out. I had a really horrible experience during a summer trip for our school program. It was a JROTC summer camp and for those of you not familiar with the program it basically gives you basic military understanding. You go on runs, do marching commands, stuff like that. It's offered in most high schools in the United States. I come from a family of military professionals so it just seemed like a logical choice. Even though I didn't plan on joining the military myself I am a pretty short girl. My name is Caitlin, and during camp, I met a nice guy. He was in my squad during a particular practice exercise, and I thought he was a really great guy. We didn't get to spend too much time together, though. The boys and the girls slept in separate buildings, and most of the time, we didn't get placed in the same squad for activities. I remember thinking that he was really funny and cute. He was one of those guys who somehow had the ability to make jokes that didn't have to hurt anyone's feelings, and I always thought that was rare. If you think about it, it's really difficult. When was the last time you made a joke that wasn't at the expense of someone else? So I guess I valued that and it was one of the things that attracted me to him. Like I said, we didn't get to spend a lot of time together and it just made me want to be with him more. We exchanged phone numbers on the last day in the hopes that we would date some time after we got out. 
We kept in touch for the following weeks and everything seemed good. The only problem was that he lived about 30 minutes away from me. We were both seniors in high school and that is a long trip for someone that makes minimum wage part time. We talked on and off again for a few months but it didn't really go anywhere and I just figured that I would let it die. That was until around late October. He started talking to me a lot. I remember we became really close and we talked on the phone a whole bunch and were texting each other obsessively. My family got mad at me at Thanksgiving because I was on my phone the whole time and I could not get enough of him. He seemed so interested in me. I later found out this because he had just broken up with his girlfriend. I didn't even know that he was in a relationship, but yeah, he got interested in me once he was out of that last relationship. He still kind of flirted with me before though, still not sure how I feel about that and it seemed kind of sketchy. I remember at one point the conversation just became a little dry for me. I got a little less interested, not exactly sure why, he just seemed so into me, he texted me obsessively, even a few weeks later and my interest started to wane. That's when he started getting really brave over text messages. He would say really intimate, almost too personal things to me even started sending me dirty pictures of himself. And not just regular pictures, like very dirty pictures, if that gives you any kind of inclination. This one time he kept saying that he wanted to sleep at my house. He said that he could borrow his mom's car over the weekend, but he didn't want to drive all the way back until the next day. He kept asking if he could just sleep in my house. Obviously my mom would have said no. She wasn't the kind of parent that would just let me let a boy sleep over and my dad would have murdered him if he had ever found out that he was trying to sleep over. Well, he just showed up one day. Literally just came to my house. I mean, what in God's name was he thinking? I had given him my address before, but this was completely unannounced, and we had been talking for months prior. It was just a really freaky and unexpected thing. He brought me flowers and chocolate, the whole thing that would be really sweet if it wasn't so creepy. It just gave me a really bad vibe. I ended up spending the day with him. We went to the park down the street and got coffee, but he still insisted on trying to sleep over. I told him no, and after getting a little pushy, he gave in and drove home at about 11 at night. Other than the weirdness, the day didn't go that bad. I did still find him funny and charming, I just had some subtle warning signs about him that made me a little uncomfortable, and looking back I should have paid more attention to those. Now here's the crazy time to put a relationship to an end. He tried getting me to sleep over at his house. He began getting really forceful. At one point he threatened to hurt me if I didn't try to sleep over at his house. I kept trying to tell him that my parents would not let me sleep over at a boy's home, but he didn't care. It was a big ultimatum and that was that. I know, I know. Messed up, but he had me under his spell and it worked. And here's how he tried to spin it to my parents. He had a younger sister and I tried telling my mom that I wanted to sleep over at my friend's house. That was the girl. And I wanted her to drive me over there. Keep in mind I didn't have my car or a learner's permit or anything. I was kind of scared of driving if I'm going to be honest. Anyway, I just told my parents that I wanted to sleep at a friend's house and they were completely on board. They didn't have a problem with it, obviously. I had done it many times before. My mom drove me over there and when we got there, the only person home was him and his family wasn't coming back until Monday. He didn't even tell me that he was home alone for the weekend. My mom had no idea that there was going to be no parental supervision. She is kind of overbearing with stuff like that so she asked him to speak with his parents. She just wanted to double check that everything was good and that they were okay with the situation. Well, as you might imagine, it wasn't long before my mom figured the situation out. She drove me back home and that was the end of that whole situation. I texted him and asked him why didn't he tell me that no one was going to be home and he literally told me that he was going to do horrible things to me. He got mad at me because he wasted his entire family vacation time on trying to get freaky with me and he didn't get to do anything. I thought he was just playing some kind of joke on me but then he started sending me pictures of some weird torture stuff. I don't know if they're weird toys or what. He specifically told me something he was going to make his dog do to me. Yeah, some pretty sick stuff. And I was freaking horrified after that. I had no idea that he was such a freak. 
I always had a bad feeling about Tim, but I never listened to that voice in the back of my head. Anyway, my mom told me I wasn't allowed to talk to him anymore, and she was really unhappy that I was being deceitful with her, and I can understand that. If it hadn't been for my mom, God only knows what would have happened. To this day, I still don't really know why I went along with everything for so long. It was like he had me hypnotized or something. I haven't spoken to or heard from him since, and I don't think I want to, either. I'm not exactly sure how to start my story. This is probably the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me, and I'm extremely fortunate that I got out without any serious incidents going down. I was in middle school at the time. My name is Angela. I really enjoyed school during those days. I was your typical naive, happy girl. I remember it very vividly. It was my 8th grade first semester, so I had only a few weeks until Christmas vacation, which I was looking forward to because I got to see my cousins. We always had so much fun. My school experiences were pretty ordinary for a girl like me, and I don't want to sound stuck up or anything, but I know that some men considered me attractive and became very obvious with the way male teachers behave towards me and other girls like me. Ask any kid in middle school or high school and they'll tell you. Certain male teachers just have a certain feeling about attractive young female students, and one of those teachers for me was Mr. Edwards. I had him for a couple of different classes. He was my homeroom teacher, history teacher, and geography teacher, so I saw him quite a few times every single day. The way he looked at me, it was just a little weird. I didn't recognize it at the time, but the signs were definitely there. He just lingered a little bit too long, and I know I wasn't the only girl in the class that he looked at a little bit too much. Now, for the most part, this was completely harmless. Many of these male teachers never act on their impulses, which is a good thing, but from what I understand, Mr. Edwards was going through specific tribulations in his personal life, I don't really know the specifics, but I heard a rumor that him and his wife got a divorce. I heard that rumor toward the beginning of the semester, which meant that it could have happened sometime in the summer, or maybe even during the school year. I'm not really sure. It was just a rumor. But it certainly would explain some of his behavior. I remember as time went on, my intuition about him became more negative, and I genuinely started feeling uncomfortable in his class. So there was this one time that he called me in front of the class. He would call on students to write the date of a specific event that we were studying and you would get up and write the date on the board. If you got it right, you got a piece of candy. Normally a lollipop or something like that. But if you got it wrong, you just sat back down. We were actually studying World War I and he called on me to write the date for the start of the war. I wasn't a bad student, but... History was really hard for me because I thought it was boring, and I didn't know the date. I just guessed, 1904, but apparently that wasn't right. Even now, I still don't care enough to Google it. I finished writing on the board. I turned around to look at Mr. Edwards to see if I had gotten it right or not, and he looked really weird. I'm not even sure how to describe it. Then he said, You should know this. You've been a very bad girl, Angela. I might have to punish you after class. He was sitting at his desk and he said it in such a creepy tone of voice. It was the freakiest thing I'd ever seen. I remember looking at everyone's facial expression and they thought exactly the same thing that I thought. Mr. Edwards caught himself. I guess he realized what a creep he was being and decided to turn the situation into some little joke. He pulled out a Nerf gun from under his desk and shot it at me. The class laughed. It would have been a funny moment had I not felt like he was such a creep just a few seconds prior. I talked to my friends about it after class and they all agreed that it was really weird. If that experience wasn't bad enough, it got even worse. So it was really cold outside but the school had the heaters on really high. Everyone including myself would wear a really heavy sweater or jacket to school and then take it off when we got inside. It was the only way to do it. It felt like an oven in that school sometimes. Being the forgetful person I am, I left my sweater in class, and it was none other than Mr. Edwards' class. It wasn't a big deal. I had plenty of sweaters and jackets. I even had a spare in my locker that I wore home that day. So, 
It was really easy for me to forget about it after a day or two. I just had other things on my mind. Well, I told my mom about it and she nagged at me to make sure that I got it before the semester ended. She did the whole, I buy you all these clothes, you better take care of them, type rant. Kind of typical, but she was right after all. I think it was two or three days before Christmas break began. I went to Mr. Edwards' class after the last class before the day ended. I was hoping I could just look around and it would be somewhere. Maybe in the back or in the lost and found box, maybe. I looked everywhere, though, and I didn't see it. That was when I asked Mr. Edwards. He was there, and of course, he was oh so eager to help me find it. When I explained the situation, he acted like he was just remembering something. Oh, uh, my mistake. I've just had it under my desk for a few days. I've been meaning to give it to you, I just got caught up with grading final papers. He pulled it out from his drawer in his desk and handed it to me. He played it off like he completely forgot. Something told me that it was not an accident. Not only because of what had happened in class the other day, but also by his facial expression when I asked him. I'm guessing that he was holding on to it in hopes of keeping it, and that he hoped that I would just forget about it. Very creepy, I know. And that was one of the creepiest things to ever happen to me, but here's the really crazy part. A couple of years later, I was attending college. I was very fortunate to have found a really good online program for my major, so I was still living in the same town. And I remember learning about the Deviant Offenders database. You know how you can look up any sort of predators that live in your area? It's all publicly available information. I strongly encourage you to check it out. Well, I looked on there for the first time while I was in college, and lo and behold, Mr. Edwards was on there. He was registered there for having relations with a minor. It didn't give you a whole lot of information, but you get a picture of them, all of their information, and what they did. It was a minor and very shocking considering that he abused his power as a teacher. The creepy part is that it happened just a year after I had class with him. I was really grateful he didn't try that with me. I know it's really difficult when someone has so much power and abuses it over you like that, but I looked at some of the other people in that database in my area. I was shocked. It dawned on me that there are many reasons to be very cautious. Stay safe everyone, and be aware of any predators that live in your area. a really horrible story from my past. It makes me feel really uncomfortable and this is probably the only way I can really tell anyone about it. I had your typical big happy family. Everyone loved each other and everything was really good. Lots of aunts, uncles, cousins and especially people your own age. There were probably about 30 of us and we all spent a lot of time together and we were all really close. However, not everyone in the family was a good egg. And here comes my uncle Ron. He hadn't been in the picture for a long time because he was in prison. I didn't know what he was in prison for at the time. I was young after all. Kids shouldn't know that kind of stuff. He was always kind of the family mess up and everyone tried their best to help him. But from what I've heard, he just didn't want to help himself. People would give him a place to stay and he would do drugs on the couch. People would try to get him a job and he would steal stuff while working. That's kind of the person that he was. He was getting out of prison right after Christmas. It was really cold. We live in a really cold area and winters are particularly harsh, so it would have just been a little inhumane to let him fend for himself. Everyone knew that if someone didn't give him a place to stay, he would probably end up back in the system, or dead. And as frustrated as everyone was with him, no one wanted to see that. Everyone wanted him to succeed, the adults at least. But I was a kid and I didn't really understand the situation. I was only 13 at the time, but that didn't stop him from giving me some creepy looks. I hit puberty young and already had the body of a young woman, if you know what I mean. I remember him coming over one day when he had first got out. My dad was going to clear out a place for him to sleep in our shed. Our house really was not that big, but if he cleared out some tools and whatnot, there was definitely a good amount of space in the shed for him to stay. Not the most ideal, but it did have electricity and a little space heater. Heck, it was a free place to stay. Hard to argue with him. 
It wasn't like my dad forced him to stay out there all the time, just to sleep there. I think my dad was trying to protect me and my brother from seeing Uncle Ron high on the couch. About two weeks went by and he seemed like he was changing. He was going for runs and applying for jobs. My dad also seemed impressed. I remember him saying that Ron seemed like he was getting his life together. It wasn't long before he had a steady job and had some money to spend. One of the first things he did was buy a cell phone and I remember him asking me to help him set it up. Of course, I was more than willing to help, especially being a kid. Technology is one of the only ways I could have helped anyone and I was excited to do so. He bought a really cheap flip phone and it really wasn't all that difficult to set up. I almost questioned why he needed help at all. I remember a few minutes after we were messing around with some of the features, he took a picture of me thinking I wasn't looking. I definitely noticed him take the picture, it was very obvious. The whole situation made me feel really uncomfortable. I didn't really know how to confront him about it though. At the time I convinced myself that he had just accidentally taken the picture by mistake and he deleted it right after. Despite having a job, he still had a lot of time to hang out and play around. I remember he specifically played with me and my brother a lot, but here's the weird thing that he did. He bought my brother a new gaming console. That must have been at least three or four hundred dollars. He didn't get me anything though. So whenever he wanted to play with us kids, my brother just ended up playing video games. He was hooked on that thing. I think it was an Xbox. So that just left me and Uncle Ron to play alone. And that was when we started playing a new game. We would fake wrestle, or maybe play wrestle, I'm sure you know what I mean. When you're a kid and you wrestle an adult and they kind of let you have a chance even though you know that they're way stronger than you. But anyway, we started doing that and it was one particular day that we were play wrestling and my dad walked in. He got home from work early and the second that he walked in, he started yelling at Ron. He told me to go to my bedroom and I heard some more yelling. I didn't see Ron the rest of the day and the very next day, my dad told me that Uncle Ron has to go on a business trip. I haven't seen Uncle Ron or heard anything about him since that incident, but my dad filled me in on some important information. The thing he had originally been in jail for was sleeping with an underage girl. I guess Ron had claimed to think that she was 18 and it was just a big misunderstanding. Of course, the family believed him and just excused it as if it was an honest mistake. My dad told me that when he saw him wrestling with me, he didn't believe that story any longer. And that was the second he kicked Ron out of our life for good. Like I said, I don't know where he has been or what he's been up to. But I guess threatening the safety of his kids finally got my dad to cut ties for good. This isn't actually my story, but it happened to a friend of mine. Actually, it was two friends of mine, and the entire situation was my fault. So, my friend Steven was someone I played Xbox with a lot. We went to the same school, but we only had one class together, and it wasn't a class where you could really talk to anyone. The teacher was really strict, so we pretty much just played Xbox together sometimes, mostly Halo or Call of Duty. If I'm going to be honest with you, I didn't really know him all that well. I mean, I thought I did, but I really did not. The other friend of mine is a girl. Her name is Brittany. She was in our grade and I was friends with her. Sometimes we texted or hung out in class. She was one of those really eccentric people. I remember her posting a whole bunch of funny memes on my Facebook wall. Some of them were mildly inappropriate. Luckily, my mom wasn't friends with me on Facebook, so nothing bad ever happened to me but I thought it was a great thing. The world is already dull and gray, and some people had just a little bit of color. But anyway, I had added Steven on Facebook. Like I said, we only really played Xbox together, and it was over a year into our friendship that I even realized he had a Facebook account. I guess guys don't really care that much about being friends with other guys there. Who knows? Well, he noticed Brittany's memes on my Facebook wall, and he asked me about her on Xbox one day. Naturally, I didn't think anything of it. In fact, he wasn't the first person to ask me about her, but I told him that I was friends with her and everything else. He asked if I was going to try and ask her out. I explained to him that I wasn't interested in her like that and I just wanted to stay friends with her. 
and that was pretty much where the end of the conversation happened. The next day, though, he added Brittany on Facebook. After all, we did all go to the same school, so I didn't think it was that weird. That's when Brittany messaged me and asked who this guy was. I explained to him that he went to our school and that I played Xbox with him from time to time. This all started going on in around November, and, and the funny thing is, is that we had a crazy blizzard that year. We were out of school for like two weeks, and it was the two weeks right before Christmas break, so everyone was celebrating, and honestly, it was a Christmas miracle. It gave all of us plenty of time to text and play video games, and it was during all that free time that Stephen started acting weird. He started asking me weird questions about Brittany, and I just kind of figured that he had a crush on her. After all, if I'm going to be honest, she was a very pretty girl, and I couldn't have blamed him. I also knew that he was kind of an awkward guy, so I just didn't think anything weird was going on. I specifically remember one day when we were playing Halo. We were having a really good time, but in the middle of a game, he said that he had to get off. He just turned his Xbox off and left, and right before he did, he just said in a really hurried voice that he had to leave. I was doing really well that game, and we were playing with two other people. I just kind of brushed it off and continued playing. The next time I saw Steven was when we went back to school after Christmas break. I saw him by the lockers. I asked him what he had been up to and he was looking at his phone. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed that his phone wallpaper was a picture of Brittany. I thought that was kind of weird, but he turned it off and put it away before I could get a really good look at it. So I just chalked it up to me seeing some sort of illusion or something, or perhaps it was in my subconscious. And I already know what you're thinking. I know that I'm naive and I didn't see any of the red flags, the many, many red flags to come, but I can't change how I acted. It was also around this time that Steven started talking about her all the time. I guess he had gotten her number somehow and they started texting each other, but here was the weird part. He would text her while we were playing video games and he always got so excited when she texted back. It wasn't very often and I kind of got the vibe that she didn't really like talking to him but whenever she did, I would hear his phone make this weird sound. He had a frog sound effect as his text ringtone for some reason, don't ask me why, and whenever he heard that frog, he would giggle like an idiot. It was really weird. Fast forward a couple of days, and Brittany texted me out of the blue. She asked me if I could give her a call because she really needed to talk to me. I have no idea what it was going to be about, and I gave her a call thinking it would be something serious. And it was. She asked me what was wrong with Stephen. She told me everything. He was obsessively texting her and calling her and messaging her on Facebook. And here's the worst part. The time that he got off of Xbox really fast in the middle of a game, she was getting off of Xbox to go to her house. She didn't invite him though. He invited himself over to her house. I guess he had gotten his mom to start driving him to Brittany's house and Brittany told him that she wasn't even home. I don't know what he told his mom or even how he got her address. It was the freakiest thing. Brittany didn't know either. She said that he had got really mad after that and she didn't understand why either, especially because she didn't even invite him over or give him her address. He was literally stalking her hardcore and, of course, she blocked him. The next time he was on Xbox, I invited him to a party and asked him what he was doing, but he pretended like nothing happened. And when I pressed him about it, he said that she was just being a female dog and prude. This was the point where I stopped playing Xbox with him. I just wouldn't accept his invites and started appearing offline for a couple of weeks. After a while, he got the hint. Brittany told me that she came really close to calling the cops three or four times. She was really worried that he was going to do something else. After all, he didn't know where she lived, and that was a couple of years ago. I haven't heard from Steven in a long time, I'm still friends with Brittany, she said that she hadn't had an incident with him since, but looking back, it was a real eye opener for me. I didn't realize you could spend so much time playing video games with someone and not even realize what a freak they really are. I've been single for a really long time. The last boyfriend I had was a lot younger than me and might be one of the least intimidating guys in the world. You see, I had a really horrible experience when I was younger. I was in 8th grade at the time actually and 
There were older boys who rode on our bus. They were in high school. Part of me always knew that they were bad news, but I thought that they were mostly harmless. Oh, how wrong I was about that one. Let me back up for a minute. I was your typical overachiever. I came from an African-American family. My parents worked incredibly hard to provide a good life for me. I was an only child, and they wanted nothing more in my life than to see me succeed, and I really did my best. I was a part of a bunch of clubs, got good grades, the whole nine yards, but part of being that kind of kid meant that I didn't have a lot of time for friends or social life. I don't know what I expected the social life of a middle schooler to be, but whatever I had wasn't cutting it for me. I only really had three friends. One of them was my cousin who lived in another state, and the other two went to my school. One of them was on the chess team with me and the other on my bus. I was chatting with my friend on the bus one day riding home from school. Like I said earlier, they were those boys. They sat in the back. They didn't really bother anyone, but they gave off a certain feeling that made me feel intimidated in some way. Not sure I can explain it beyond that. Well, toward the middle of the school year, they started getting really flirty with me. Whenever I saw them around, they would compliment me, and I won't lie to you, I love the attention. Having guys show an interest in me felt so good. I know I was young, but I so desperately wanted to expand my horizons in that part of my life. One of them eventually got my number, and we started talking. He invited me to a small party where those guys and a few other people were getting together. I normally was said no. There's too much to do most of the time, but it happened to be on a day when we had a lot of snow during winter and school was closed. It probably would be for the next few days, and they even offered to pick me up. I asked my parents about it, and they said that I could go so long as I brought my phone and kept in contact with them. It was actually really fun. I had a really good time at that party, and I felt like the center of the room the whole time. I was the only girl there, and they all flirted with me. During that winter, I started spending more and more time with them. My friend from the bus encouraged me. I felt a little weird being the only 8th grade girl amongst a group of high school guys, but I was young. I didn't think anything of it, and as weird as it was, I had a good time. Very early on, they started trying to get me to drink alcohol. Of course, I didn't tell my parents about that part. I also didn't tell them that they were older than me. From a practical standpoint, these were some bad people to be hanging out with, but I never gave in. I told them that I was too young to try, and they didn't force me or make me feel bad about it either. They respected my decision. I remember one Friday night, I actually think it was night that started winter break, I had just gotten my grades back for the first half of the school year, and I had over a 4.0. My parents were so proud. I was hanging out with those older guys and they were all drinking a lot of beer. It must have been around 6. That was normally around the time that I went home, but, but my parents texted me and said that I could stay out late that night if I wanted to as a reward for doing so good in school. One of them started getting really drunk though. His name was Tyler. That was when he did something a little unusual. He offered to give me some Kool-Aid. I don't think that he was being racist, but that was the only thing they had available, and since everyone else was drinking beer, it was the only thing that I could drink that wasn't alcoholic. I said yes, because it honestly wasn't all that bad. Also, I love that lemon flavored cooler aid, favorite thing in the world, or at least it was. I remember him giving it to me and looking at me in a weird way. When I drank it, it tasted fine, but a little while later, I started getting really lightheaded, and at a certain point, I passed out. I don't really know what it was in that drink, but the only thing I know is that I woke up at 9am. I was almost completely naked except for a bra, and my body felt weird. And it felt weird in exactly the ways you'd expect. We mostly hung out in one of their basements. It was a really big area, and there was another room beside the basement. That was normally where people would put their coats and stuff. I was in that other room. I ran back into the main area of the basement and started screaming at them. I was so mortified and felt betrayed. How could they do this to me? They started teasing me and saying that I was Tyler's girlfriend. I had like a hundred texts and phone calls from my parents. I really didn't want to stress on my parents any more than they were already. I kept asking the guys where my clothes were, but they wouldn't tell me. Tyler said that if I gave him a kiss, that he would give them to me. But I was honestly disgusted at that point. And I was standing there in tears, begging for my clothes from guys who were four years older than me. Finally, I gave up and just started to leave. I just needed to be home at that moment. I was not okay. 
and that was probably the worst experience of my life. I had to walk home almost completely naked while it was snowing outside. I didn't have any panties on. Luckily, I could put my jacket from the other room around my legs and cover that part of me up. It was a little awkward wearing my coat that way, but it prevented anyone else from seeing my bottom half. When I got home, my parents were obviously shocked. They kept asking me who had done this to me, but I wouldn't tell them. I felt so ashamed. I kept telling them that I just wanted it to be over and to forget it. I told them that I was okay and I never was going to see those people ever again. I remember my father holding me in his arms for a long time and I really needed that. Eventually I got showered and got ready for bed and I thought that I was going to be able to just forget about that night but of course it's never that easy. It was only a few hours after I got home that Tyler started texting me. He said that he had pictures of me and he was going to send them to everyone in school. Of course I told him not to but he said the only way that he wouldn't was if I sent him more. And this began the creepiest, most humiliating phase in my life. That creep sent me disturbing pictures and videos that they had taken while I was passed out. They did things I really can't talk about, ever. Just know that they were horrible. And Tyler said that he was going to let the world see them if I didn't send him even more. Tyler began stalking me. He texted me all the time and went into full predator mode. And the worst part was is that I couldn't even tell my parents. I thought that they would disown me if they saw those pictures or videos. I felt completely helpless. Of course, I now know that I should have said something that night, the night I got home, but I didn't. And the abuse continued for way longer than it should have. It was around February that I finally had enough. Tyler kept asking me for pictures and I was tired of sending them to him. I just couldn't do it anymore. I decided to do something about it and I asked one of my favorite teachers for advice on what I should do. She was extremely supportive and got the situation resolved. We filed a police report and did everything we could. Thankfully, there was a lot of proof over text messages. The boys basically faced a serious criminal threat if any of those pictures ever went out to the world. And the important part was that I don't think my parents ever saw them. I know they would have been so ashamed of me and I didn't want to let them down. It's been a long time since this experience and it really shaped me into who I am today. It's why I haven't really dated much and it's also why I hate winter. I'll always remember the cold snow touching my bare back as I walked home that night. I haven't kept up with what happened to any of them but I can't imagine it's good. Hey friends, thanks for listening. Click that notification bell to be alerted of all future narrations. If you got a story, be sure to submit them to my subreddit, r slash let's read official, and give and receive feedback from the community, and maybe even hear your story featured on the next video. And join my Discord to interact with me and other listeners directly. And if you want to support me even more, grab early access to all future narrations for just $1 a month on Patreon, and maybe even pick up some Let's Read merch on Spreadshirt. And check out the Let's Read podcast, where you can hear all these stories in long compilation form and save huge on data, located anywhere you listen to podcasts. Links in the bio.